Black uh, server. Oh. I'm gonna test him. Okay, here we go. Like hey. Things. Hey. Hey. You okay? On, Me? Yeah, are you okay? I know. I am. Are you? I don't know why it's not working. Damn. Yeah. How was how was your day going so far? I was just thinking about. What you think? I was just thinking about when um. I was just thinking I can't about see when. It I'm in OBS. On that tragic day. And those towers fell, and what I was doing in that <laughs> current moment. What were you doing? Were you at I, home? I was in the hospital. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Maybe. Well, I, I wasn't in the towers. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Why were you thinking about the towers? Is this some kind of sick I joke? Was... Yeah, I was in the hospital. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Is this some kind of sick joke, or is this just how <laughs> families talk now? It's... What? Do you guys think you're going to live forever? Do I think I'm going to live forever? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've died before, so yes. You wanna live forever? <laughs> How did you die? Am I? Is this like a joke? So as a teacher, I had, uh, I was sick. I had like what I thought was a chest cold. I had gone to the doctor. He thought I might have bronchitis. I was coughing up blood. Um, and it was just kind of a weird thing. I felt a little better on Saturday and Sunday, but then, then Monday morning I woke up. And I went to the bathroom, and as I was standing going to the bathroom, I felt like I was going to pass out. I, I think I might have. I think I might have laid on the ground and, and, and just passed out there. And so I got back into my bed. I took and refinished a screen porch on the back of my house into a bedroom. Um, so I closed it all in, and I finished it off nice. But because it was on the outside of the house, it was kind of. I made it so it was soundproof. So when the band was practicing at 2 in the morning, I didn't really hear them. I could sleep. The problem was that I really couldn't get a hold of anybody to let them know that I was really not feeling well and having a problem. And so I set my alarm uh, as loud as I could so that hopefully somebody would hear me because I was passing out like lying in my bed. And one of my friends came in and, and I said, look, I've got to go to the hospital. I said, I, I, like, I can't even like stay conscious. And so he drove me to the hospital. My friend, his father was a doctor. His father had said that I might have a blood clot and that was dangerous. And I was like, well, first of all, blood clot, my mom had blood clots and nothing bad ever happened to her. I didn't think it was like such a big deal. Uh, um, but here I was at the hospital. I had a what's called deep vein thrombosis, a DVT, which is a blood clot in your leg. And then it pumps up through your heart, and then it goes in, the blood would go in from your heart then to uh, your lungs to get oxygenated, and then it would go back out to your body. Um, but when it got into my, my uh, lungs, the clots were filling up my lungs, and it was causing all the air sacs to burst. So that's why I was coughing up blood. It was actually in a really bad place where I had like significant damage and I, I was kind of drowning in a sense. But the clots were so much that my heart couldn't actually push the blood through my lungs because there was so much blockage. Um, but they put me in and they, 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 they flipped me back on the table and they're like, you know, stay with me, you know, stay with me. And they're doing all that kind of stuff. And I'm thinking like, I felt like somebody ripped my chest out and I was in so much pain. And it was like, you got to be kidding me. You want me to stay awake? Like, this is terrible. And um, at that point, my heart stopped. I live in a garage that was rented out to me, and my bed is two stacks of tires with a tarp laid over it. In the morning for breakfast, I, I have a bowl of dog food, what the fuck? and for lunch, I scream at myself in the mirror. <laughs> oh my god, you guys are so funny. I think people who do drugs are really awful people, pathetic even. Oh they yeah. They need a substance to live. <laughs> I oh, yeah. don't agree with you. It's using it as a crutch, really, like, get a life. And I hate it. And everyone who does it, it's so unattractive. Right, 
I just be telling lies. I'm the druggie I was talking about. I'm the person uh, I'm who uses weed like a crutch. I was projecting. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. That. Did you see the did you see the light? I actually did. What do I think the light was? Well, I think maybe it was God. I saw Proverbs things that I couldn't three, five, see. Five and six. And and Galatians forty two seventy five. Mm, amen. Yeah. Uh, the only way I can describe it is like diving into a pool. Like a pool party, there's lots of people talking, and you dive underwater, you can kind of still hear them, but it becomes kind of muffled. So it felt like I did that. So I could hear noise around me, but then I opened my eyes and I was surrounded by light. Some people say that, you know, uh, like they give you drugs to try to keep you going and all that kind of stuff, and that you can have euphoric experiences experiences and and that's possible and i and i realize that i'm coming from a perspective of believing in god so you know i might have a a tendency to see things in a certain way um but it's not quite like being in a cloud i don't know how to describe it it's just like if light was solid and it could hold you that's what i felt like i was being held by this light but i, I like i saw things that i wouldn't have been normally able to see um i felt like it it let me lean forward and look down. And when I looked down, I, I, I saw myself. Initially, I looked and I thought that I, I, like there was a bunch of people working on chicken. It was just like, you know, because they, they had stripped me down. I was naked. Um, and, and they were working on me. And then I realized that that was me. And I thought to myself, that's me. I must be dead. Um, and then I actually got overcome with just an incredible sense of peace. During that time, they had done uh, CPR on me. They broke most of my ribs. They did uh, electric, the electric shock to try to get me going. Uh, they they, they give me an injection. I think it's called atropine, uh, which gets the heart going. It's a chemical. So there was a lot of things that they were doing to me, and I definitely was being beaten up pretty badly. Um, and after I saw myself, I did kind of feel just the sense of peace and joy and just love and just calmness kind of overtake me. And then and then that was that. Um, and then my next memory was when I was looking. I was standing next to a bed where I saw somebody was in the bed. I didn't recognize it as being me and my future wife and her mother were standing next to the bed but they were really short and i didn't understand that they were praying for me and i didn't realize it was me at the time but when i see people praying for somebody or so, and i don't really know what they're doing i just tend to like want to leave because i i don't want to interrupt whatever's happening and all that kind of stuff so in my mind looking at that experience i left what they experienced was, it was later that night, I had died multiple times, they had to keep, you know, do a lot of things to get my heart going. They had come in to pray for me, they had stabilized me, and they had literally just walked in and started praying when my mother-in-law felt something go by her, and she thought it was the doctor working on one of the machines. I think I had, I had tubes all over the place, and uh, different machines. And and she felt something go by her and then I flatlined and they had to come in and revive me again. So my visual was I'm looking at my body, they're praying for me and I choose to leave the room. She feels that or experiences that thing and then I immediately flatline again. I could not have seen those things. There's things I just could not have seen or experienced. Um, even when I kept, they kept me in a coma for a couple weeks and when I came out of the coma, uh, I was telling people like I had died, you know, I had gone to heaven, I had all these things and, and I don't even remember saying those things, but it was very clear in my mind that I had an experience that was quite amazing. And when I talked about the whole, um, you know, what I saw with the bed, like it just kind of matched up so perfectly with what she was experiencing, what I was experiencing, what happened, you know, and I don't know how I could have done that. Um, I remember the pain of dying. I remember, you know, 
seeing my body and thinking I was dead. I remember that. They said there was one time when somebody was holding my hand. They said, oh, he's, he's holding my hand. He's squeezing my hand. And, and I literally had to like think where my hand was. And then I realized that somebody's hand was in my hand, but then I don't remember. But they said that they played music for me. I think all the stuff that they talk about, like if people are in a coma and stuff like that, you can still hear, you can have still experiences and stuff like that. So it's really important to like play music that they're they're familiar with. When my mom passed away about, I don't know, it's probably been about 10 years now. Like I was singing her songs that she liked as, as she was, you know, in her final moments and I believe that she kind of heard that you know there's there's things that they talk about that you can still have certain sensations and, and I did definitely experience that um, I felt like my life was or my life force was kind of like in my my chest you know like the whole idea of having a soul you know we always think of our brain as being our the center of our thought process and everything that we do um, but I felt like like physically I could feel like my ch chest contained like my soul. Like I would look at my hands and my legs. If I took an axe and cut them off, like it wouldn't have really affected me. <laughs> um, but that my soul was like housed within my lungs, which as a Christian, you know, like God breathed into us and gave us life, you know, or something like that. Like there are stories and there are, you know, things that I've experienced or read and, you know, so I could be putting that kind of perspective on it, but um, like I actually felt the physicalness of my soul in my body at that point. I think when I first started having like, it wasn't really a heart attack, it was more like an, they call it a heart atrophy where your heart just stops. Like it does, it can't pump anymore. It felt like something came and literally just like, like ripped out my, my chest. It was so painful and I wanted to say like it hurts and all I could do was go like moan. <laughs> Like I couldn't even talk, it was just so incredibly painful. And at that point, everything was not in my control. Like everything was just, you know, the doctors were trying to keep me awake, etc. Um, and I think the description of jumping into the pool is kind of what it felt like when I lost consciousness because that was the definite division between where I was in my body and then where I wasn't in my body. And when I wasn't in my body, I, I was there was no pain, there was no anything. It was just like this honest sense of peace and and so forth. I was being held by the light over my body. So I was watching them like operate on me and, and do whatever they were doing. And then later on, I was just kind of like hanging out next to my my body. Um, it was when I had that experience with, with my future wife and her mother. There's not a lot of people who have had the experiences that I've had, but I have been able to talk to a lot of them. And when I say a lot, I probably talked to about 12. <laughs> I mean, it's a 12 person sample, but it's interesting when you look at different religions and how they describe that, or you know, I think everyone's heard, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel or, you know, walk into the light. Well, I just wonder how much that has to do with anything. Um, but it's pretty consistent on everybody that I've, I've talked to that have had those experiences. Well, my eyes were closed, and I do have the sensation that I opened my eyes, and then it was just... It's like if you could look into the sun, but it didn't hurt your eyes. You know, at first I didn't realize that it was me, and then I realized it was me. Does that make sense? I didn't even feel my body at that point, but I, I just had like a consciousness that was there. It was just that I was being suspended in this, this light. And then when I looked down on myself, it's like the light kind of separated so that I, I could look down and I wasn't just in the light, but I could actually see down uh, into the operating room. When I looked down at myself, like I, I didn't look like me. Like at first I thought it, it looked like chicken. I don't know, like if you have a piece of chicken on the counter or something like that. I don't really look at myself like that, but I mean, I was dead. Um, like if you're standing and looking in the mirror, even if you're naked, you have muscles that you're exercising, you know, so you have form and stuff like that. But when there's absolutely nothing, even when you're sleeping, you have muscular movements and your body's doing certain things. But when you're not alive, like everything is just flat, you know, like there's no, there's no blood pumping there. It's just, it just was nothing. And I remember thinking to myself, oh my God, that's me. I must be dead. I think I had a, an episode, you know, like where people say like your life flashes before your eyes. So it wasn't so much what happened in the past, you know, people think like all the things you did wrong and you have that whole flash or whatever. It was all the things that hadn't happened yet. Having kids, getting married, you know, growing old, all those things that that hadn't happened yet that I wanted in my life. I thought of all those things like this can't be happening because I still have all these things to do. I did feel like this, I mean, it's like a high, but it's not like a drug high. It's it's just this, well, maybe it is, I don't know. Um, I just felt like this feeling come over me of just, and it felt to me like love. It, I, I don't know how you describe it. I mean, if you're a kid and you're like sitting in your parents' lap and you just give them a hug and they love you or, you know, like you just feel safe and you feel, you know, secure and you feel loved. However you can describe that, that's what I felt. 
I kind of closed my eyes and I just kind of like surrendered to that. And then that's when that memory ended. And I was okay with it. Despite all the things that I was like upset about not being able to experience, I was perfectly happy to, you know, to go over to that feeling uh, of love and peace and joy and however you want to talk about it. But I don't think we on Earth experience what I experienced. I don't think that's possible. I think there's always things that are distracting us physically or mentally or emotionally. And like all those things were gone. So it was just a complete peace, um, which was nice. I don't fear death now. The only thing that I fear about death is the people that I leave behind. You know, right now my kids are kind of young and I want to make sure that they're okay and that they're all set. I definitely feel that after I had the initial dying part, um, that then I was in heaven. And I don't know what heaven is. The whole idea of being in this light, like, is heaven a place or is it just there? You know, because I mean, heaven was above the operating room. It's not like, you know, you're going up into the stars or to another planet or something like a physical. It's just kind of like a place that, I don't know, it gets into all that, you know, interdimensional <laughs> kind of stuff. But it... But I think that heaven is just, it's like around us and we're just not in it yet. We can't experience it yet because we're in the physical. I think when I was in my coma, as far as I know, and, and, and I could be wrong because I was in a coma, but um, most of my experiences while I was in the coma are like I was next to my bed or I felt this or I saw that or I heard this, but they were all in relation to the physical realm. So I feel like, like I kind of was hanging around my body, but I hadn't quite entered it yet i didn't enter it for a couple weeks i feel like it was just kind of drifting you know it's like you hear stories about ghosts and spirits and stuff like that i don't know if people haunt or whatever but i, I just felt like i wasn't attached to my body like i had that freedom because i was no longer in my body and that's kind of when i get to like the soul like i didn't really feel attached to my body like i could look at my hand but it really didn't feel like my hand i didn't feel connected to the physical i was more connected to like that freedom of being able to kind of move around well, my sister was the first person who told me that I told her, like when I came out of the coma, she was there and she told me that I kept saying that I had died and I saw God and blah, blah, blah. And, and she kept saying, you know, they were trying to calm me down because I was like super excited about sharing that. I don't remember that. I think the first person that I told was probably one of my friends and I don't think they knew what to make of it. <laughs> you know, I mean, they were Christians too. So it's like maybe they, but it was just kind of like, it's just such an out there kind of thing. How do you... I was on all these tubes and machines and I couldn't talk. All the machines that they had in the, the electric shock, you know, because you, you're basically sending electricity through yourself and burning your flesh. They told me when I had died, basically my veins started collapsing, which is the beginning of rigor mortis. Uh, my liver failed, my kidneys failed. They thought I would need dialysis the rest of my life. Um, my liver had all kinds of problems. Uh, my heart, obviously. Two thirds of my lungs are damaged, so I have limited oxygen, but it's enough to live. I mean, it's not like I can do stuff. I was the third person to have the procedure done to me that they did. The first two died. I had gone into the hospital at another time later, maybe six months later for something else. And, and people came in to meet me because I was number three. And they're like, I did my doctoral dissertation on you. When the new nurses come in, like you're one of the cases that we present and show what happened and stuff like that. It was it was a lot of recovery. I mean, I laid in bed. It, I was I couldn't really move much. Uh, getting up was horrible. I mean, if you're if you're out of commission for a couple of weeks, like you have absolutely no muscle to balance everything. And, you know, to get me up and walking and stuff like that. Like that was like such a incredible challenge um, I would go grocery shopping and I couldn't even like I looked down the aisle and think oh I need mayonnaise but it was like just walking down the aisle was just too far I had little old ladies opening doors for me because I couldn't open the door they were they, it was too heavy for me you know so I had to kind of like build all that back and stuff like that but it was a it was a hard beginning getting back to to recovery um, and there were setbacks I mean there were times when I would make two steps forward and then I would have you know three steps back or or something like that and then I would slowly recover and it's, it actually took before I could even lay on my stomach it took me like a year from all the damage to my ribs because all my ribs are broken but that first week I was happy to see people and I felt like since I was back I had more purpose in life you know and I was excited about like being alive and all that. It was hard because I think for my my fiance, I went through something that was absolutely amazing in my mind. <laughs> and they went through something where they could have lost their son, their brother, their good friend and, you know, fiance. And they were at a point where they were still struggling because they didn't even know if I was going to live. They they told me that I had a 50% chance of living a year and a 10% chance of living 2 years. 
And this happened like 20 years ago. So I needed to be there for other people too. I need to reassure them that it's okay. And that kind of really encouraged me to get up and walk and, and to, you know, get better and and so that people weren't worried about me they looked kind of very nervous for me i mean they had seen me for weeks now you know connected to machines and tubes and you know i was basically on life support <clears throat> and now it's like i'm getting up and walking so they were very shocked that i was doing those types of things but then there were setbacks one day i would get up and go for a walk for a little bit and then i would have you know fluid build up in my lungs and i couldn't breathe so it was up and down and i know from their perspective that it was touch and go because I think what they were being told was that I wasn't out of the woods yet. And they didn't tell me that. Uh, um, I don't know why they didn't tell me that, but for them, they, they just didn't know what was gonna happen. But for me, I was committed to like getting better and to, you know, getting out of the hospital and, and moving on, you know. I felt like I was more peaceful. I felt like I had more joy. As time has gone on, the burdens of life, being tired and, and, and doing things, they pile up, you know, and, and so some of that has gone away. Just having this conversation is bringing back a lot of those feelings of what I had at that point, which is which is really awesome. Um, I've talked with kids who have had cancer, people who are afraid to die, people who are, are terminal, and reassure them. Um, it's actually made the, the remaining part of their life much better because they, they weren't carrying that burden and that fear of death, and they were able to live really fully. You know, I'm tired, but I've, I'm definitely... Uh, energized by our conversation i have to say that i'm very impressed by the questions that you asked like you're like you're really good at this um i mean like i was very impressed if you could tell everybody in the world one thing what would it be i think if there's anything that i would say reach out to people take advantage of opportunities to to like bring joy and happiness into people's lives um because um, it can be really quick and easy to cut people off or, you know, just avoid people or not make eye contact. But when you kind of really engage with people, like, I think it makes a big difference. Um, and so that's, I think, the thing that if we all did, I think we'd be in a better place. No, when I died, I, I, I just looked down and I, and like, I was in this light and then the light opened up and I could see myself and they were operating on me. And then I realized I was dead. But then I came back. And then you told the operators, double it and give it to the next person. No. Nope. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh my god, you were the funniest thing I've seen like for such a long time. My I'm kids? kids? Why not? I um, never got married. Oh, you have to be married? Yes. No. Oh. Well, it's a sin. So, having kids out of wedlock. <laughs> Have you ever raised in Ohio? Do what? Have I ever been to where? Have you ever raised in Ohio? Um, what's I'm not sure what "riz" means. Maybe not in Ohio. No. Why have you? Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> How was it? Okay. Should I add it to my bucket list? Sure. Alright. What, what do you think about Jet Johnson, senior? I can't find it. Me? Yeah, what do you think about Jet Johnson? I don't know who that is. He made the he made the songs for the Judas George movie. For, oh, did he? Jack Johnson? I love my daughter very much. I love all my children. I'm sorry that your dad doesn't look <laughs> good. Or you don't love him. Stop! I just, alone. it should have been me! <laughs> don't forget, I'm a dad. I have to be old. I could never be a dad because I drank too much Mountain Dew growing up. Uh, my favorite color is blue. Uh, I'm going to be a little gross here, but it sounds like jizz, but it's not the same thing, right? No. Uh, no. Ew! I'm not trying it's to be like, gross. Like, you wrist her up, you wrist her up. It's flirting. It's just no. flirting. Riz is Yeah, flirting. okay. That's all it is? And what's a glizzy? Yeah. That's a, that's a hot dog. It's a hot dog. It's a hot dog. Yeah. Is it just a hot dog? Yes, it's, it's a hot dog. I, I teach. Unless I teach eighth weird. grade. I teach eighth grade boys, they and they all come the in with these words, and I really don't necessarily. I gulp glizzy for days. The latest thing they're all into is the new Fortnite. OG Fortnite. I killed somebody. I'm voting for you. Then. I'm yeah. voting for Emmy. I'm really bad at hiding stuff.
I'm really bad at lying. You have to vote for you. You have to vote. Aww. Sorry, guys. I'm just not good at this game. I. I don't know. This sounds awfully risky. <laughs> There's no need to worry, Juliet. So how it works is if you volunteer as an actor, you have to play out a scenario on stage. EDP 445 is getting cancelled. Apparently they committed a tax fraud. Yep, yep, that's definitely the worst thing they've done. <laughs> What? Aneurysm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey. Thanks for the distraction, man. I appreciate it. Been trying to hunt that son of a bitch. I was weak here. I'm not gonna lie, I was too busy moderating my Discord server to uh, be paying attention. We may have a problem. No. You have a problem. I want no part in this. You're the one who committed tax fraud. And I won't be seen around you until you fix your shit. Do you think I have BPD? <laughs> Damn it! Someone sent me photos of Mr. Yeah, bro, are you a real down. Discord mod? Uh, yeah. 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 I have to let you go, Jojo Phil. Yeah. Obviously not, if you forgot. <sighs> I didn't forget. I feel like a lot of these are only funny if you know the people personally. Now, I'm the one who's going to leave you a fat plot. <laughs> The tip of my bullet in your ass. <laughs> oh, the pizza guy. Or should I say, big apple burglar. I'm a super admin in your favorite server, bro. You better back up. <laughs> oh, oh, you okay. know who this man is? You understand how much clout he has? Server owner. I'm, I'm so I was sorry. confused. You better back up. You I, know, I know you're a server Discord owner, bro. Thank you. Oh, it was Honestly, <laughs> I'll buy your house <laughs> for D-Bucks. It was nice being able to actually, like, Discord Okay, guys, only click acting, acting if you're funny. Oh my god, I'm an actor! I'm an actor so more! Hold on, someone's at the door. I'll get it. It's my honor to meet you, Prince Trump. How can I help you? I am. I am. Total bummer. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> but why come here? <laughs> no, don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. <laughs> that sounds like a scam. <laughs> Are you fucking okay? Percentage are we talking here? <laughs> oh my god. You fight with the strength of many men, Sir Knight. I am Arthur, King of Taiwan. Dracula, the anus destroyer. 
I seek the finest and the bravest knights in the land to join me in my court of Saskatoon. <laughs> oh. You have proved yourself worthy. Will you join me? <laughs> you said I don't want a fucking nothing. <laughs> you make me c <laughs> I don't think I'm supposed to be on stage yet. <laughs> what the fuck was that? You make me c <laughs> Oh wait, you're silent. You make me c <laughs> So be it. Stop saying it! None shall pass! <laughs> What? <laughs> None shall pass. This is amazing. I have no quarrel with you, good sir knight, but I must cross this bridge. Then you shall die. I command oh, you, shit. as king of Taiwan, to stand aside. On I move for no cheeks. First king of the <laughs> <laughs> Ah! <laughs> now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tish, but it exploded. Sif, sif, sifter. Sphincter. Sphincter. A scratch. Your big ol' whooping cock off. No, it isn't. <laughs> well, what? But if you're in the audience, you can submit a prompt that the actors have to work into the show somehow. What are you gonna do? I did not. I am the paladin of justice. Are you that guy? Ever since my goddess. Oh, who typed all this? Uh. Uh. Jesus, this is a whole goddamn paragraph! Right. Anyway, the evil knights, the living <laughs> shadow. <laughs> At least it gets in. This is in. My, my. <laughs> what do we have here? <gasps> the knight of living shadow. If it isn't the paladin of justice, tell me, what happened to your goddess? Guys, I'm so sorry, but I think I actually have to go. I just saw word that my mom went into cardiac arrest. That trouble with a heart attack. No, 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 listen, you can't use this but as I, an excuse to, like, leave. But I'm really so sorry for interrupting your game like this. I know time is precious. And I appreciate all of you being here. When I was growing up, it was just me and my mom. I meant, like, I do have to go soon. I just got the call from the hospital, and I would really blame myself if I didn't go and ended up being the one, you know? There's a chance it's nothing, and she just having trouble with her aortic valve. I'm going to take the subway down. I think it might actually be faster than just driving down. Cause the line I had a lot of fun playing with all of you guys. Thank you again. I have to go see my mom now. Again. Really sorry. <laughs> what? What is it? It looks like What's I so have to go all out on this one. Gotta play this for what the fuck was Woo! happening? I don't even know what was going on. I'm a fan of It was you! It was you! It was you! It was you! I put the same prompt in. It was you! Dude, it was you! Dude, it was you. What? No, 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 no. What happened to your we fucking you mom, huh? Talent. What the fuck happened to your mom? I, Is your mom okay? I, I thought he me. actually had to go. I didn't know that's what that whole paragraph was. Dude, it was so realistic that I actually thought he like, had to leave. And yeah, I, was like, I thought he had to leave. We, he's got talent. He he's got talent. Talent. Dude, you realize that's okay, what it's so gonna it be from to... now on. Just paragraph stories of people's moms Good. being in the hospital. Yeah. Stop there complaining and get it's, it's just to give them something funny to say. This has gotten me a lot of hate, and rightfully so. I have made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment, and I don't expect to be forgiven. I simply am here to apologize. Oh my god. Oh, how do I even read this, bro? How do you zoom in? Is there a fucking? I gotta fix my FOV, bro. Hold on, I actually can't. Give me, give me one second, guys. Me one... I was a member of his. Oh, yo, one sec. I think I heard a noise from my downstairs. What? One sec, guys. I can't read the prompt. I'm away from my computer now. I heard a noise downstairs. I'm just checking if my grandma fell. 
You guys, I can still hear you guys, okay? I'm just taking a sec to walk downstairs, okay? Continue the continue the game. I can still hear all of you. Just just taking me a sec to walk down, because I have like three flights of stairs in my house. Yes, I, I already know it's not good to have an elderly woman staying in a house that has three flights of stairs to get to the bedroom. All right. I, I, I just have like three I just have like three flights of stairs in my house, and you already know. I, I know it's not good to have an elderly woman staying in a house that has three flights of stairs, okay? No one has to say anything. All right. I'm downstairs now. Oh. I'm downstairs now. Okay, which way you cock oh, seconds put that across? <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck. Oh, fuck. I'm so sorry. My, I'm so sorry, guys. This is serious, guys. Guys. <laughs> guys, I think she actually might be hurt. Guys, can you please just kick me from the instance? Can you please just kick me from the improv room? I can't play the game right now. I can't meet my mic, and this is about to be really personal. Fuck. Fuck, I can't do this right now. Fuck, is there a mod here? I'm sorry, please, just- uh, Can you someone kick me from the improv or the room, please? I can't mute my mic, this is about to get really personal. Fuck, man. What the fuck oh is my wrong god. With you? No, not right now. I, I think she might have to do it. I'm sorry, please, j just kick me from the improv or the room. But if you can, I can't mute my mic. Like, this is about to be really personal. Fuck, man. No, not right now. Uh, is, is there a moderator in here? Can you, like, can you kick me? I can't deal with that right now. I need to get ice in the call. I'm gonna say something. How are you are not on desktop? Like, if you can, I'm sorry. No, don't actually kick them. Awkward. Just, just kick me, like, I'm serious. Don't actually sorry, kick sorry. them, that's part of the problem. How could I have been so blind? Ever since I committed tax fraud, I've been feeling really horny. I wish I would just go away, but every time someone mentions that I committed tax fraud, to say when your grandma is dying downstairs. <laughs> I Where do you change your FOV? Where the fuck do you change your FOV? I have mine at a hundred. Graphics? Damn. Damn. Graphics? <laughs> just hear him typing ferociously. He's just to get a say. mechanical, the mechanical keyboard going hard right now, dude. Fucking sounds on the downstroke, sounds on the upstroke, dog. He's typing like a whole manifesto man right now. Fucking just right now that's typing. Please stop. I think Emmy got it. Yeah, she did. She did. Oh! Greetings. Oh. You sent for me? <laughs> yes, Julia. I just I'm saw the script and y'all are absolutely. I don't have a problem. And I can stop any time. No matter what ye old therapist says. Well. I would do anything for my dear Romeo, even this if it show? means it's overdosing on copious amounts of- <laughs> Oh my fucking god. You guys, I don't want to say this. <laughs> this is not a prompt. I just, just want to take, take this time, moment while I have like all, of your, all, all, your all your attention <laughs> to talk about to talk some about stuff some that stuff. is important to that me. That is important. Ah, good President Glumstick. Please, ex please excuse our ignorance. Bow awkwardly. You don't read what's in parentheses. We meet again! Oh, I know. I in the event that again. followed 9-11, George Bush led us oh, down a path yeah, that ended yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. I love playing your mom's sex life. I won. This is not a prompt, I just wanted to take a second to talk about something that's really important to me. In the days following George Bush's 9-11, the American- <laughs> A hint of... This is not prompt, I just wanted to take a moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have allowed an attack to happen that would let me involve. Oh, wait, wait. It would let me. Stripping of American freedoms! And freedoms stripped from the American people. The infection, the intention, is to put you into a coma. With 600,000 dead. Yeah. 600,000 dead! Dude, we don't care Please. about your politics! <laughs> I personally beg you. You know what, I'm fucking skipping this part. I think the script Back is Back to the show. Intake not for this wicked effect. 
Okay, okay thank you for all for listening. I we can so. get back to the improv now. Games, and I'm still on a roll! <laughs> I haven't seen The Legend 27 for a hot minute. Probably scared him away. Thank you. Do Romeo okay, and Juliet! Now. Back to the show. <laughs> and lots of it! With all due respect, I'm not looking to get turned up tonight. Only, though... The only high I seek is the everlasting high of love. One moment. Three, two, one. Jesus Christ! Hey! What are you doing? What's, what's what are you here? doing? Uh, no! <clears throat> what is <clears throat> Oh no. I believe you misunderstood me. Oh, I knocked Juliet. over something on my GoXLR, sorry. Okay, continue. Okay. <laughs> I do believe you misunderstood. The purpose <laughs> of your this is not prompt. I just want to take this moment while I have all your attention to talk about some stuff. See you around, partner. <laughs> Alright, bye, bitch. Why did that happen to me? I did it! I did it! I did it! I'm in! 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 Bullshit! Welcome to tonight's much-anticipated political debate. Tonight we are joined by our two presidential candidates, representing the Cowboy Party, Cletus Williams. Well, how do folks? Fuck this guy. I reckon I'm not feeling too confident about handing over our nation's rant to a vermin like that. Whose idea of good time is so Oh my god, this guy is such a fucking dick. This isn't even a bit. From my planet, this guy literally, we have a holiday where we kill him every year. We call it Kill Leroy Day. I want to kill this fucker. I'm pissed. I'm angry. Let's get loud. Let's get proud. Let's do it live. We'll do it live. Fuck you. Fuck what you stand for. I'm going to kill you. I'll kill your mom. I'll kill your dad. You're gone. You're over. It's done. I win. You're done. Sounds about right, actually. GG. This is lore. <laughs> this is all the Hold Lord. up. Did you say politics. you have- No. Not what I said. Moron. What the fuck am- What the- Shut the fuck up. You can't even print out a word. SHUT UP! <laughs> My species reproduces through interbreeding with blood relatives and is therefore superior. Okay? And you probably fuck strangers like a weirdo. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You... Fuck you. Fuck you, dude. Don't fucking talk to me again. Don't hit my line, dude. Don't come by my house. Don't fucking ring my shit. You're oh, mine! You're right. you're fucking freak. This guy's weird, oh, chat. Can we just acknowledge that he's weird? All oh, nations will be destroyed. Going. But if you vote for me, we will start by destroying... Wherever this guy's from! You're done. You're done. He's cut. It's over. Interesting points on both sides. However, we're... We're almost out of time. Mr. Cletus Williams, do you have any closing remarks? Ha 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 ha! I your fucking fire alarm! Ha 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 from the plasma scorched ashes of this miserable sphere of rock you call Earth, we will now build a new society, Zaza Land. Me and Leroy are making Zaza World. Holy shit! Hey. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm doing that. Sorry, I I don't want to kill the vibe, but when we were waiting backstage for, <laughs> shut the fuck up, sir, or I'll fucking kill you. I hear you giggling. <laughs> 
<laughs> you give me this big ass paragraph. You expect me to perform it and you laugh. <laughs> Fuck off. I'll read it. And I'll read it well. Oh, and you're not gonna fucking interrupt. Hey, uh... I'm sorry guys, I'm like being serious. I don't wanna like kill the vibe, but... Yeah, that was good. Take us to a different <laughs> world, Sermo. Yeah, you're a talented writer, Sermo. Talented. Yo, I, I really, fucking I really <laughs> thought I was watching Emma oh. Stone and Daniel Day Lewis. I swear, it was phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if those Dunkin' Donuts, donuts man. Yes. Wow. Scam? I just... When we were playing earlier and when we were hanging out yesterday, I think everyone was being really mean. And I, don't, I don't think that you guys compliment each other enough. Mm -hmm. I see. Man. Damn, Damn true. That sucks. <laughs> no, I didn't have a piss drawer as opposed to more like piss. Like, I, so, okay, so you know about money laundering, right? Like how it works. When I was eight, I was choking on a Thin Mint in a parking lot of Arby's and I started choking, so my mom made me get out of the car and drink puddle water. Oh, I've drank so puddle sad. water before. Like, I learned that like, on uh, r slash shower thoughts. He said, I just had a shower thought. I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we did this? And so then I did. Come on. Do the fucking line. Do the line, bud. Don't make funny noise. Oh, say, say the line. <laughs> line Come on, bud. Don't be like that. <laughs> I don't like this conversation. Maxi went through a really hard time because his mom has a problem with her um, aortic valve and his grandma oh my got God. hurt downstairs <laughs> and he had to yeah, leave had the to video game flights. to go help and call That's the true. ambulance. Oh he had to take the subway to go I see his mom in the hospital. Of a lot of grandmas <laughs> falling down a lot of flights of stairs. Have you guys I had to go down like three whole flights of stairs. When I was six, dude, my uncle told me that turkeys were like, like, like that baby chicken eggs when they weren't fertilized were turkey eggs. So when they got fertilized, they get turned into chicken eggs. So one time I ate an egg and he's like, you're going to get a turkey inside you, you fucking turkey boy. And I cried for like about an hour and a half. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> My parents used to tell me that Canadians had green blood and I still believe it to this day. That's aliens. You're thinking of aliens no, having blood. No, I think I need blood. the blood. No, it's, it's Canadian. No, it's no, 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 the same thing. Because, uh, no, it's Canadian Canadian bleed no, no, this is a genuine true story. I'm not. Yeah. He fucking talks? What the fuck? Yeah. Okay, okay so, uh, I decided I think I need to say this on Muffle, but no, I just said, and this is a true story, by the way. One time when I was younger, I pissed on my dad's floor for my underwear. I don't know why. And he came in, he was like, he smells, and it's like, what is this? I say water, and he just walks out, and it's like, better be. And I'm fine. Dude. If we get really technical, it wasn't even my dad. <laughs> what? Who? Mm -hmm. Explain. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not too sure about all that. I, I'm not the most. I'm not going to be out here saying ghosts are real or anything, but you know, it's like. like Look, man, I keep know. trying. <laughs> I keep trying. I keep going to those places. I want to see a ghost. I want it to happen, but it, they they haven't got me yet. All right, I'm. I want it. I want it badly, but they won't show themselves to me. I want nothing more than to have like com some completely unexplainable experience, so I can believe mm. for at least a minute that there is more to the world than there is. <laughs> but there is not, alas. I have not experienced that yet. I remember when I was younger, like going to the church and all that. All I cared about was the fact that I could go play like Mario Wii because they had like a Wii set up there. It's like I had the game at home. I don't even know why I cared about playing it there. They didn't know how to get the multiplayer working. I was like, I, I can get it working, but for some reason, the controller wouldn't connect for multiplayer. So they all thought I was lying about it. I never really had a consistent water figure. There was my first dad that I don't remember much about till I later on went and visited him. I was a bit younger, I don't remember as much about the second guy, but I do remember at some point, like he put the little beer in like a cap and made me drink it and my mom was like mad at him for doing it. I was like, oh, it's just a little sip, come on. <laughs> I think the longest one, the most memory I have was of the last uh, one. And this guy, I've already told you about the guy, the guy I pissed on the floor of. <laughs> what? Yeah. Wait, who, he pissed on some dude's floor? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, the guy that my uh, mom was engaged to, I pissed on his floor and I said it was water. He like smelled it and said, better be and just went off, like nothing happened. 
<laughs> why did you? <laughs> why? You... I. I... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. When I was ten, my mom died of a drug addiction, unfortunately. So that's why I've been living with my grandparents. My grandpa uh, di died of COVID, and then my grandma. You know, started kind of making impulsive decisions and moved to Florida because we had family here. But I mean, my sister hasn't been happy with it. My grandma hasn't been happy with it. I'm just kind of been indifferent to it. Last year, when I first got over to Florida, and I was living in the trailer with my grandma and my sister, and uh, I had the little middle part of, part of the trailer. My grandma had the chair in the like living room area, and my sister had the bed in the back. So I was just sleeping in the middle. I had all my stuff set up in the middle. <laughs> I had a little base station set up on a shelf so I could still do my VR stuff. We were in the trailer at the time, she was constantly stressed out and yelling and I'll wake up, I'll hear my sister and grandma yelling at each other and just kind of go back to sleep. It actually messed up my sleep schedule a bit. You know, I have no issue sleeping on the floor, I had my VR stuff set up and all that. It wasn't extremely difficult to live in the trailer or all that, but uh... I'm definitely glad to be out of it, and since then, my sister hasn't just been as angry at everyone. Some things have gotten better since then. It's not unbearable or anything, but I definitely was probably taking it the best out of everyone there. Oh yeah, there was no privacy at all. Like, the doors would slide open. One time my sister kicked in the door that led to, like, the living room, and my thing was held on by a little plastic thing as it slid to the side. Uh, the little plastic thing came off, and all of a sudden, the dog was able to just open the door like a dog door because of that. It was able to just push the door forward and get in my room anytime it wanted, and that led to the other dog, uh, getting jealous and trying to mark his territory on my bed over and over. The cat actually destroyed my headset cable at some point. Not unusable. That was kind of the point where I was, like, telling my sister, Hey, you gotta do something about your cat. And she was just like, It's your problem, not mine. It's your stuff. She had that mentality for a bit when she got to the trailer, actually. Uh, she actually, uh, at some point, took my headphones. I was asking for my headphones back. I was like, Hey, you took my headphones. Like, so? Can I just get them back? It it's your problem, not mine. And she just didn't want to get the headphones back. <laughs> I like snuck the headphones from her and she got mad at me for it. Like I was using those, what did you do that for? It's like, it's my headphones. And that, that happened with a few more things. Uh, recently she's uh, got pregnant. So I guess we'll see how that goes. But apparently my grandma's gonna have her move out because of it and because she just doesn't want to raise, you know, children for a third generation. Raised uh, my mother. She's raising me right now. She just doesn't want to do it again. Hold on, just got tangled up around, like, my chair's arm. Hold on, what's even... There we go. But, you know, my sister and grandma haven't been in the, uh, you know, the best of friends recently. You know, again, as I said before, I quite often just wake up to hear them yelling at each other, but it's no, it's nowhere near as bad as in the trailer where it was all day, 24-7 sometimes, where my sister would be yelling and upset. The best days in the trailer were the days where everyone left and I was just kind of left alone there. But now that I'm kind of living in uh, the bigger house with my grandma and sister, I just kind of spend a lot more time in my room. Probably like 2018, 19, I don't know. My sister, you know, she's uh, big into like uh, family stuff and ancestry around the time. She was looking at family trees and she found out who her dad was uh, and got in contact and, you know, arranged a visit. My grandparents just kind of drove me and my sister uh, to his house. It was interesting, like, uh, I don't know, I, I'm not the biggest fan of him. I kid you not, when pretty much all he did 24-7 was, uh, watch reaction videos of this, like, song by some guy, Tom McDonald, like, very political rapper or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Mc... Who the fuck is Tom McDonald? Yeah, no, he spent all day ignoring his kids watching reaction videos to that. And I remember, like, two things specifically, like, him yelling out to his wife, like, I need more reactors or something, like, just trying to say something. And another thing he ended up yelling out was, like, uh, they're stopping Tom McDonald from going on trending or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, the amount of times I heard that song on repeat while I was over there, he was actually, like, I don't know, like, he was, like, a few, in like, an inch or two shorter than me, which surprised me. He sounds like a piece of shit. I actually, uh, bonded with my little brother there for a little bit. My sister brought the Switch over, so what I did was I downloaded Fortnite on it and played it with him, uh... I remember also, at some point, showing him, like, little game development back when I still worked on games with the Roblox engine and all that. He was, like, I he was originally, like, I think very excited. I didn't see it, then he just realized how extremely boring and tedious it was. <laughs> I just didn't care anymore.
I wasn't really enjoying my time there because again, all the guy ever did was sit around watching reaction videos to like a single Tom McDonald video, like watching every reaction video he could find. <laughs> like, ignoring his just, children like, sit too. sit on a computer? Like was he just no, like in the of, other room on the computer <laughs> like, daddy's working? No, it was the working. living room TV. <laughs> it was the living on room the TV. living room TV! <laughs> Yeah. Bro, browsing YouTube on the living room <laughs> TV. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I just kind of wonder, like, what's going on with like uh, all three of his kids that he does have over there now. Is there like a fucking forum that he's finding these Tom McDonald uh, fan women? Like, I just, I don't understand. How does this guy have that many children? I, I don't know. Uh, although I know apparently how he and my mom met was he was a drug dealer at the time. Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh, my mom uh, was looking for drugs and he was the dealer at the time and that's how they met. I'm pretty sure nowadays he doesn't deal drugs, he just does them. Uh, Can we get to the, the you pissing on your stepdad's carpet? Because I, I really want to know why <laughs> you pissed on this man's carpet. That, that's the one I have the most childhood memories of since I was the oldest when I was with that guy. Uh, I mean, yeah, obviously pissed on the floor and all that. Uh, but also, I was eating my food, I was full and all that, but he thought I was wasting it, he thought I could eat more. So he just, like, forces me to eat it till I end up vomiting. I don't remember too much about him, like, I know what my dad's like now, because, you know, I visit him at the older age and all that. But, uh, you know, I'm going off memories of what this guy was. I just kind of remember not liking the guy too much. I remember one time, we were roasting marshmallows outside, but I didn't like burning them, I liked getting them, like, that brown, like, like a softer brown, you, you know what I'm talking about. He just couldn't stand it I was doing that for some reason, I have no idea why. So he like forced me to like start burning the marshmallows and I didn't like how like the burnt marshmallows taste. And so I just didn't roast marshmallows that night. And I, I don't get why he was so upset with that. <laughs> just like a small little thing. Uh, I do also remember like I would always go in the morning and just kind of bother my mom and she would just give me <laughs> the phone to shut up. One night I was on my mom's phone he just kind of comes in there and takes it away and I still don't know what that was about because ever since then I just wasn't really allowed on it. It's not some interesting revenge story or anything. I was just being like, I don't know, it's like seven or eight at the time, who knows. I was being stupid. I just decided, what, what if I try pissing in my underwear so I pull down my pants and try and just kind of piss through it onto the floor. <laughs> then he walks in at some point a bit later I guess I hadn't cleaned it up for some reason. He's like, what was that? I just say, it's water. He like smells and it's like, better be and walks out. Wait, restart it. Why did you piss on the floor in the first place? <laughs> I told you, I was like some stupid, like seven or eight year old who decided to try pissing in my underwear. I don't know why. <laughs> Oh, you were like seven. Okay, that changes a lot. I really thought you were like a full-grown adult and you pissed in the man's carpet. <laughs> no, no. Listen, I don't get on this game that much anymore. But I got on this game like six months ago. And I got into a lobby with some people. And there was one dude who was just drunk and he's like, I had to pee. And people were like, okay. And then he doesn't, he doesn't put his headset down or anything. And suddenly you just hear the fucking sound of water splashing on a carpet. Like, obviously, like, a fucking, like, shag carpet style fucking carpet. And we're all just like, what? Bro, are you pissing on the floor? He's like, yup. And he just keeps pissing on his own fucking carpet while he's just drunk out of his fucking mind in his lobby and we're all like why are you pissing on your fucking floor he's like it's my floor i can do with it what i want and i'm like what That's, you, if you do not clean that up now your room will smell like piss for anyone who comes into it and he's like i don't give a shit and i'm like all right you are clearly a loss you are like you are fucking not fit for society you fucking keep living in your piss cave i mean i don't remember like too much uh, specifically i have an idea of like what she was like in my head but I, i'm bad at describing stuff like that I know there was a while where she, we, where she was staying at my grandma's house and when I was living there too, uh, because for a while she didn't really have a home. I remember one night going to like one of her friends' houses. They didn't have like a like microwave or stove or something. If you want to eat tonight, you're gonna have to eat like a cold slice of pizza, and I just didn't eat that night. But my sister told me that she remembers on that day they went into a closet and did a drug deal. Uh, apparently, yeah. I didn't catch that though. I, I, th I think I have some vague memory of it. We were all home at my 
grandmother's house at the time. And at some point, uh, she was in the bathroom for a while. My grandparents weren't home. And my sister, who was like 11 at the time, started freaking out because our mom wasn't responding. has been in the bathroom for a really long time. And she she calls our grandparents uh, to get home about this. And at the time, she was just kind of crying about it. She was uh, 11 at the time, and... um, you know, she was just like crying and freaking out the whole time, and that that's why I remember of it. You know, then over time she just kind of you know calms down like hours later and all that. Or I'm assuming hours. I I don't have a good time frame of how quick everything happened. Um, that that's what I remember. When our grandparents get home, the door's locked. They can't get in. Uh, they call uh, like an ambulance to come over. And what was happening was uh, they went in there. They found her, she had a drug overdose, and they took her out of the bathroom and uh, and took her to, like, a hospital, and we all got her in my grandparents' room, my grandpa, grandma, sister, and me. Everyone was freaking out. At the time, I was fine. I, you know, I I was, you know, I wasn't sure what happened, but I was just going to assume things would go fine, so I wasn't freaking out or anything like everyone else. Uh, But, you you know, everyone else was scared. My sister was crying and all that. Then uh, the news came that she died. She died before they could get to her. That was it. <laughs> I wasn't feeling much at the time. I was originally just thinking, eh, it's probably going to be fine, right? That was my original thought. But, you know, when things weren't, it was just... Uh, I, 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 you know, I didn't feel, like, too much at the time, you know? I wasn't, I wasn't extremely sad or anything. I'm a bit more upset about it now and all that, but it hasn't affected me too much. I don't, I don't think so. Um, you know, I've been in and out of school constantly, you know, constantly taken in and out, homeschool at times. It was like kindergarten or pre-K. I ended up, uh, getting taken out of school because, uh, my ADHD at the time was too much for them to handle. So they had me in, like, some sort of, I think, like, some sort of principal's office or something, holding me with my arms against the wall, bending me down. Then when my mom got there and saw that, she immediately took me out of there. She didn't think uh, they were treating me well. My arms were put up against the wall, and they're holding me down like that. Why? Why? Uh, because of my ADHD. Uh, what does I that I mean? High- I don't know. I guess I was being <laughs> too hyper at the time, and they, <laughs> so they tried fucking, doing something they about it. They put you in like a <laughs> fucking restraining <laughs> position. What the yeah, fuck? They restrained me. I was probably like screaming and all that. And yeah, and when my mom saw that, she took me out of there. It's like, remember, this is like kindergarten I'm talking about. God uh, damn, it must re- have been a terror. Then I went to like a middle school that was public, a public middle school. And that ended well. But then when it got to like high school, you had COVID happening, everything switching to digital. They didn't switch back. They said it was like for environmental purposes or something, reducing paper usage or whatever. And I was just doing terrible at school then. I didn't really <laughs> even make much of a attempt at some point when i got to florida i got put into like a uh high school for autistic kids which i didn't do too good in either i don't know i just after middle school i just hadn't been doing too good in school anymore and eventually i was just doing bad it was getting around the end i got taken out and that's why i'm a high school dropout basically i remember I, dude, dude i heard it look i heard it so many times and i know like in that video like the music video or whatever he like has a line about him like braiding his hair in cornrows or something since then he like gave my little brother cornrows if you could tell everybody in the world one thing what would it be uh, i don't know like i don't have anything that good to tell people like I don't have, like, a good message to get out there. Um, I, like, I don't have much experience. I don't have any wise words to say. Like, I don't have, uh, anything I'd really want to say to everyone. Um, I know, yeah. Like that scene really Wonka? Wait. Augustus gets sucked up into the fucking chocolate tube, but it's actually the opposite. So I'm trying to tell people, and I don't, I don't know how I can get the message across any fucking better. I run a chocolate factory. I pump out tweets. I literally got the golden ticket. I'm literally fucking out here. You know what I'm saying, bro? You know what I'm saying, bro? I really just don't know what to say anymore. They just don't get my vibe. My energy is too strong for them. Dude, I had a corn dog. I had a couple protein bars. Vibing with some protein bars. 
Dude, I was going crazy on some fucking watermelon. Let me tell you, I was some fucking crazy on some watermelon. Vibing with mac and cheese. Good day of food. Good day of food. Weezy, Weezy, pull yourself together. Shut up, Weezy. <laughs> pull yourself together, man. Brad Pitt's still alive. Remember that. I know you love him a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't be around anymore without the least finger of Brad Pitt. It's a cool place. Anyway, and you know it's cold. I don't want to. I don't want to be in a world way. without you Smash go, Mouth and either. Rocky yeah. Raccoon, man. Hey, you start coming, you don't stop coming. Don't make sense, not to play it for fun. You ain't get stuck when your head gets stuck. So much to do, so much to see, but what's wrong with taking the back streets? Hey, you start coming, you don't go. 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 Go to the kitchen, dipshit, right there. Yo, you're supposed going, to be dead, you're fail RPing. Damn. Go to the kitchen, bro. Grab some on the January 6th? I can't <laughs> fucking grab that! <laughs>